So a shopper lands on the homepage of a large department store and wants to buy a t-shirt. That shopper now has two main options. He can perform a search for t-shirts or he can take another approach. He can navigate to get to where he wants to go. The shopper might start in the menu bar, then browse through the categories. Men's clothing, then shirts, then t-shirts, until he arrives at the products he's looking for. We've already talked about searches. Now let's turn our attention to the browsing process and how you can provide your customers with the best possible experience. Take into consideration that when it comes to home pages or search boxes, it's easy to give straightforward advice. To create a good one, you need this, and this, and this. But category pages are a bit more complicated. What works for one site will not be a good solution for another. Let's try to make some sense of it. To get us going, let's examine a few sites. When you choose what to display in the menu bar of your website, think about what will be most helpful for your shoppers. To make browsing easier, you may want to include a mega menu. This provides almost instant access to both a category, such as men's shoes, and a subcategory, such as casual. But not every website has categories. This is a small website run by one artist. The site sells 27 different prints. Because the artist is selling one type of product, prints, and because they're all by the same artist, there's no need to divide them into separate category pages. It's easy enough to scroll through all the available products. Let's compare this with a much larger e-commerce site, Saatchi Art. As you can see, this site carries paintings, photography, drawings, and much more. Each of these categories has subcategories. The site sells thousands of pieces of art. It would be impossible to find anything if they were all simply lumped together. That's where the category page comes in. They help shoppers navigate their way through large numbers of products and provide an overview for each category. This site's painting category page is the gateway to subcategory pages such as fine art and abstract. You can click one of the styles and start browsing or you can use the drop down list to access all the different styles. On the painting category page, there's a link to watercolors. And of course, there's a painting which serves as an example. Here's a problem you must be careful to avoid. It's vital to make sure that the shoppers understand they're looking at a category page that leads to subcategories and not a product listing page. In other words, they need to understand that this particular watercolor is just an example of the watercolor subcategory. It's not for sale, or at least not from here. This is what a painting looks like on their subcategory page. Notice the label just says watercolor, nothing more. Click it. Now we're on the product listing page. Just like before, shoppers are shown images of artwork, but this time each image appears along with the name of the painting, the painter, and the price, amongst other things. In other words, it looks like a product that is for sale. So this info has no place on an image that's just an example of a category. If the category page and the product listing look the same, the shoppers will be confused. They might even think that the items that appear on the category page are all you're selling. Don't assume that the shopper knows where he or she is on your site because he landed on your homepage, then clicked on a category, and then a subcategory, Shoppers don't always start surfing your site from the homepage. They could do a Google search for paintings and land directly on the painting category page. They need to understand where they are and what they can do here. Okay, so we looked at a very small e-commerce site without category pages and then at a very large site that had categories and subcategories. Now let's look at a medium sized site. This site offers somewhat various categories such as original art, under 200 pounds, printmaking, drawing, and painting. When we click on the painting category, we don't see subcategories. There's no need. It takes you directly to the product listing page. Note that there are lots of refinement options on the left. The customer can refine by artist, price size, and so on. This works well for the number of products this particular business has for sale. When a category has a manageable number of products, it doesn't need to be further divided into subcategories. So, 
What have we learned about categories so far? One, you can help shoppers by providing the best possible menu bar options. Number two, consider using mega menus on your site. They reduce the number of clicks shoppers need to get to products. Three, you don't need to use categories on your e-commerce site to sell just a few products that are similar to each other. Four, on the other hand, do include categories and subcategories if they will help shoppers navigate to products faster. Five, be sure that category pages don't look like the product pages. And finally, number six, don't assume that shoppers know where they are because they navigated here. They could land on any page on your website. Good luck. Thank you.